Uh, well, Joseph, I'm sure the last few days have been a complete whirlwind. I know you've been on this little tour. I saw you uh, at New Heights on the Empire uh, State Building uh, in New York. Uh, maybe a little bit of fear of heights there, but just what what has life been like since you won the Indy 500? Yeah, funny enough, I don't like heights, but I'm super comfortable in a 240 mile per hour race car around Indianapolis. Um, it's been amazing, you know, a long, long journey to to win the Indianapolis 500. It's certainly our most difficult race of the year. Um, you know, the one that seemed m most elusive on our calendar, you know, we run a full championship, but this, this 500, you know, much like the Daytona 500 is something that everybody wants to put on their resume. So having done it for 12 years and to finally, you know, get it to work out 11 years later, it, it, it just means a lot more. Um, and I think because of all the heartbreak that you go through when, when you don't win the event. Uh, and then obviously just going back to the race and that final, you know, shootout, the move that you made when you're in the red flag and you're thinking, OK, I'm sitting here in second. That's where I'm restarting. Like, how is this going to go down? Can you kind of take me through your mental state there? And then just obviously that that final lap. Well, there was a lot that happened at the end. You know, it's, it's unpredictable how these races go. We had three red flags. So essentially three restarts and they all had a different look and feel, you know, and this was this was all within the last 10 laps. So there's just a lot of nerves when you're you're in that front group, you have an opportunity to win. You know, each time we came into the pits for a red flag uh, to wait to go back out, you know, you could see the crowd of 330 plus thousand people and you feel the energy, you hear them. And it's just it's hard to not get emotional within that moment. You're just trying to focus on, you know, the task at hand because you still have to run the end of the race. And the final one was was certainly the most stressful and difficult, you know, came down to a one lap shootout and. You know, for me, I was in a really good position. I think it worked out that I, I restarted second and I just tried to time my pass uh, at the right moment. I think, you know, I think the timing was good. You know, clearly, clearly we won the race, but it wasn't easy. You know, I felt like coming off the final corner, Marcus, who was behind me, still had a good run and, and it wasn't a given that we were going to beat him to the line. So I did quite of an aggressive move off that final corner just to try and break the draft. And um, yeah, it was just enough. I, I definitely knew about 100 foot before the line that it was going to happen and you know, it was, it was just uh, a crazy feeling, uh, you know, seeing that victory. Yeah. And you mentioned the fans, 330,000. Uh, you elected to, after you won the race, go and celebrate with those fans. Uh, I think I read somewhere like you've been planning on that. Like if you'd ever won the end of 500, you were going to go celebrate with them, but then you go and do it. Like, what was that moment like? Cause we were watching on TV here in Charlotte and we're like, love it, but oh my gosh, is he ever going to get out of, of that, you know, crazy pit of, of fans there? Yeah, it was, you know, incredible to be able to do that. I had been wanting to do that ever since I started as a rookie 12 years ago. And so I knew exactly, you know, where I wanted to park the car, where I wanted to go. And I told myself, if I'm ever lucky enough to win this race, this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to go in the crowd. I'm going to enjoy it with everybody. And uh, it was incredible. You know, I think the only the only thing that went differently in my mind was when I got through the fence, I felt like I was going to be able to climb a lot higher in the stands. I wanted to go to the very top. And and I quickly realized I wasn't going to make it much further than the, the first couple rows. Uh, and it, 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 it did turn pretty hectic. There was a lot of people around. Uh, they were all very excited. And uh, at that point, I was like, you know, I don't know that I could stay out here very, very long. I probably should start to head back to the track, find the team. Um, but it was so cool. You know, I mean, for me, the crowd, the energy, that's what makes Indianapolis. There's no place like it. And you know, it, it, everything I could have imagined it would be like is, is exactly how it was. It just was overwhelming as far as the energy and joy. So um, just pretty cool to share that with everybody. Yeah, well, I'm sure you'll never forget. Those fans will certainly never forget either. And then uh, after the Coca-Cola 600, obviously, Team Penske gets the win here. Ryan Blaney told us, he said, well, OK, one, the pressure was on because Joseph won the Indy 500. So we're all talking. OK, someone's got to come through for, for Roger here uh, for the Coca-Cola 600. And then after he won, he's like, well, I had to go in the stands because Joseph did that. So now you guys have kind of set this precedent for when you get when you win big races, a Team Penske driver has to go into the stands. Well, I was super happy for Ryan and the team. You know, I, I didn't even realize that Team Penske had not won the double as as a as an establishment. You know, I felt like for us, um, there wasn't many, you know, accomplishments that haven't been you know, already achieved. And and so to hear that that was the first time that we've done that was incredible you know, for Ryan, um, you know, he's a good friend and I'm, I'm such a big fan of his. I, I, I love watching him race. Obviously, we support all our Team Penske um, compatriots. But, you know, Ryan had that pressure, 
you could see that he had the pressure and people kept asking him so many questions. And, and you look, he was very deserving to win. He's been so close many times. Uh, just just this year, even I've been watching so many races where I thought he was going to win and, and it just didn't happen. So I was probably just as happy as anybody to see that victory. And when he went in the stands, I thought that was even cooler. You know, I, I know he watched our race and and to be able to share this weekend with him, share the double. I, I made it more sweet. So I was super happy for him. And, and you're absolutely right. We have a. Uh, probably a new tradition um, that we can keep now if we win big races. Yeah, and you mentioned the sweep there. Uh, crazy, like you said, of all the accolades and all the things on uh, Team Penske and Roger Penske's resume, never the Indy 500 and Coke 600 in the same weekend. So what does it mean to, to be a part of that history for the organization? It's pretty special. You know, when you do something new for this group, um, it, it, you know, it seems impossible. I, I, I thought pretty much every box has been checked. So, uh, you know, to be able to learn that stat was was fantastic. I mean, this you know, this team Roger Penske has built over, you know, 50 plus years has been really the standard uh, in motorsports. You know, they're arguably the greatest motorsports team on the planet. Um, and rightfully so, you know, they're, they're some of the best at what they do. And, you know, it starts with Roger and, and the, the belief and the commitment that he gives every individual in this team. And, um, you know, to drive for him is, is a huge honor. It's something I never thought I'd be doing when I was younger. I never, you know, envisioned myself within this group and in this, uh, you know, a sacred environment and, um, you know, winning the 500, there's a lot of pressure with that just because Roger really built the team at Indianapolis. You know, he used to go there as a young kid with his dad and and dreamed of winning the Indianapolis 500. And now he has 19 of them. So uh, it seems like nothing is impossible for Roger and team Penske. And, you know, just to, to be a part of that group is, is really, you know, for us, it's the pinnacle as race drivers. Yeah. And then just to share this experience, to have your family there, you know, I read so much about how your dad just has this optimism and was always like, we're going to keep doing this. We're going to find any, any and every way to keep you on the track. So to be there with mom, dad, your wife, you know, young Coda, all of those things. And to have all of those moments, you know, I'm sure it makes it that much more special, but what was it like just being there to, to take it all in with them? Yeah. Whenever I got the question, you know, what what did Indy mean? What, what do you, what do you really think about when you win the race? And and for me, it means family. You know, I I've, I've had so much sacrifice from so many people that have helped me get to this point and are a part of this journey. You know, it, it's like anything in life. It takes people to to do stuff and, and you've got to work together. And, and I've had the best of the best supporting me, you know, starting with my parents and without my dad, my mom, and, you know, specifically my dad and what he, he did to, to really lay everything all on the line for me to have this opportunity. It was, you know, it was just as much of a win for everybody else um, and my family. And, you know, now having, you know, my wife and our first kid, um, we have a young son to have them there. It was just indescribable how special it was. You know, it, it, this would have been different if this happened 10 years ago. And I, it, I'm almost thinking that the timing was perfect. You know, it took yeah. 12 years, but because everybody was there and the way it was done, um, I'll take the timing. I think it worked out well. Yeah, it's funny how like in the moment you're like so focused on it has to be this year. It has to be right now. But I think that's great perspective on on why it worked out the way that it did in, in your 12th try there. And I think David told me you, you made the trip to Charlotte to get some time in the sim to prep for Detroit. So no rest. It's look, I, I don't know how people do this schedule and then perform again on this weekend. They've always called it like the Indy 500 hangover. If you win the race, you got to try and just survive this you know, never ending cycle and, and then still get back in the car, you know, just a couple of days later and, and compete again. Um, it's no different than Ryan, though. He's got to jump back in again this weekend. And and so I'm going to try and get some uh, some preparation for Detroit. And we still got a championship to go after. I just don't want us to settle on, hey, it's a good year because we won the Indianapolis 500. We still want to win the championship and, you know, trying to not settle for, for this great achievement is um, it's a hard thing to do. But I think it's the right mindset if we want to keep going. All right, Joseph, congrats on the success and adding this Indy 500 to your resume. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Take care.